Some dudes walk around with wide lat syndrome. Don't ever be that guy. It's the worst thing ever. If you haven't got a big back, it's not a crime. It's not offensive. No one's going to care. And if they do, again, they're being an absolute dick. <laughs> Gym hacks is a ridiculous term, but it's the kind of vernacular we use in 2020. So that is what we're going to talk about today. My name is Simon Miller. Thank you very much for joining me. I've been lifting weights for 20 years. The reason I get that out there nice and early is because in the comments, people go, why should I listen to you? You shouldn't listen to me. You shouldn't listen to anybody. You should follow your own dreams and you should follow your own goals. But also, if you are just starting out in the gym and you want to find ways to make, well, to make yourself a little bit more confident or make yourself feel a little bit more comfortable or just enjoy the environment, hopefully some of this stuff is going to be able to help you. And some of it you'll also be able to do at home so you can work up, you can build up, get that confidence going at that, get that confidence going before you actually do go to the gym. But remember, no one's looking at you in the gym. And if they are, they are the asshole. Uh, please do hit the subscribe button. If you're brand new to the channel i always appreciate it and please do hit that big thumb the like as long as you do like the video it's important that we're being honest with each other because youtube loves that stuff but let's just do it here's 10 gym hacks your ass needs to know number 10 utilize pull-ups and push-ups right so this is for the people that are working their way up to actually going to a fitness center don't know why i said it like that because i'm an absolute moron but do it mean if you are going to the gym you should absolutely be doing push-ups and definitely, 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 you should be doing pull-ups. Have you ever seen somebody with a big V taper, you know, a big wide back? Some dudes walk around with wide lat syndrome. Don't ever be that guy. It's the worst thing ever. If you haven't got a big back, it's not a crime. It's not offensive. No one's going to care. And if they do, again, they're being an absolute dick. Yeah, if you ever see anybody with that, they are absolutely 100% doing pull-ups. And pull-ups are incredible too, because don't forget where you place your hands on the bar is going to affect your back so much. You do overhand grip, you can do underhand grip, you can do wide, you can do close. Uh, some pull-up machines will allow you to kind of do a, a more of a neutral grip. And all of these are going to help. And it's your form as well. Like you want, really want to make sure you're pulling yourself up so your chin's going above the bar. And when you come down, you can focus on your negative rep. Hell, you can just hang there. If you just hang there and give your lats a good flexing and make sure you relax your shoulders, all of this is going to help. And it's the same with push-ups. Like, if you <clears throat> feel like you can do, I don't know, 50 push-ups or whatever, whatever you can do, get a 20 plate, a 20 kilogram or a 20 pound or 45 pound if you're in America and put it on your back. Anybody can do that. Or if you feel like you can't get somebody else in the gym or a friend to do it, it's absolutely perfect. And again, it's a great thing you can do just to start at home if you're not working out at the moment. You can always get a pull-up bar that will attach to your door. I'm sure Amazon sell them. You can buy plates, weight plates from anywhere. Or you can get any kind of plate. You could wear a weighted vest if you really wanted and just start doing that. And you then... You know, you're just going to get into the mindset of doing some exercise, but also as a, I guess as a gym hack, if you are training back or you are training chest and you're looking at ways to finish off those muscles, yeah, do some crazy pull-ups, maybe at the start or at the end to really finish things off and do those press-ups. Like, do those press-ups. You're dead, you're fatigued, you're feeling awful. Just do three sets of that with some, uh, with some weightage on your back and kapow, you've just taken one step closer to immortality. Not true, we're all gonna die. Didn't mean to bring the mood down. Number nine comes in the form of dips, which kind of ties into press-ups and pull-ups, but I'd argue they're less important. But the biggest problem with any gym, right, or at least any gym I've ever gone to, is most only have one dipping station, which sounds like somewhere you should get donuts, but it's not. And that drives you nuts, because every gym these days are oversubscribed. So you go to do dips, you're like, I can't, because that jackass is there. You can always do them on a on a bench, you know, and you put your hands down and you can put your foot on another bench, but a much better way to do it. And I know we're kind of stepping into gym etiquette rules here, but as long as you're working and training hard, who cares? I'd respect somebody doing that. You can go into a squat rack, a squat rack right? As long as you've got the the um, sort of sidebars in the right place. You can get two barbells. I'll find a picture. Somebody will have this online. Loads of people do it. You have two barbells. You put them on the squat rack sides and you can just do your own dips. Now, you've got to be careful because those bars can roll around a little bit, but you know, the cool thing about doing that, or the, uh, I guess, productive thing about doing that, is that you can kind of decide how wide you want it, where do you want your hands to be. It's much better than a machine, which is obviously going to be static and in place. But yeah, the amount of times I go to finish off chest or triceps, whatever I'm doing, and I want to do some dips and I can't, you think, well, I don't want to stand here while this guy finishes. And I know you can go and work in with these people, but honestly, not only is it a great thing that you can do, but it kind of, I'd argue, is actually quite better in terms of form, but give it a go. Number eight makes me sound like an absolute jabroni, and I only kind of bought into this over the last couple of years, but it is true. And if something's true, it's true. Number eight, 
find yourself some good workout clothes. Find yourself like an outfit or some gear that makes you feel really comfortable and makes you feel confident. Because amazingly, like, you know, the, I can't even think of the right word, I guess gym fashion, ugh, sounds terrible, makes me want to punch myself in the head. But gym fashion has become way popular over the last five, 10 years. You know, every big brand is doing it. But it is true, if you find a vest or a top or some leggings or some trousers or some jogging bottoms, whatever it is, that you really enjoy working out is, not only do you look forward to it, because it's nice to wear nice clothes, but because it makes you feel good when you're in the gym, a, po a positive approach and a positive atmosphere will mean that you have a better workout. Now, I know some of this stuff is way expensive. So maybe pick and choose as and when. But I started doing it, like I say, over the last 24 months or so. And it does work. Sometimes I'm such an asshole. I look at clothes and go, oh, I'll wear this one today. And you're like, what are you doing? Go to the gym, you absolutely, you absolute moron. But I do. I get a kick out of it. And it made me realize because even before I've got there, I'm feeling quite good about myself because, you know, the way the material feels or the way it makes me look or whatever. So, yeah, definitely something to just a little something to try. If you need a bit more motivation for the day, you know, you drop 30 quid or something on a top. And if that's enough to get you there, ultimately, it's a worthy investment. Number seven, this is for the people that are really, really struggling to even start. Don't overthink it. Like if you go on to any kind of beginner's workout plan now, they'll go, go three times a week. And I've said this too, so more shame on me. But go three times a week. Uh, do circuit training. Make sure you get your rest. Make sure you get your food. And you're like, it's all too much for me, man. Like for the last you know, five years, I just sat on my couch and watched TV. And now you're asking me to do all this stuff. I don't want to do it. Then don't do that. Day one, do 10 minutes of exercise. You can go for a walk, you can go for a run, you can do the push-ups, you can do the pull-ups, you can do high knees, you can do some yoga. You, you choose whatever exercise you want to do in that 10-minute period. Everybody has 10 minutes. You can find 10 minutes. Sometimes people go to the toilet longer than 10 minutes. And then on Tuesday, let's say you do it on Monday. On Tuesday, do 11 minutes. On Wednesday, do 12 minutes. On Thursday, you know what I mean? Just add a minute into your day, into your, uh, into your plan every single day. And then by the end of the week, you will have gone up by six minutes. And if you keep doing that, eventually you're going to be doing hour-long workouts. And maybe because then you feel like you are in a tiny bit better shape or you're used to the exercises or you don't feel so... Maybe you're just more comfortable with sweating and being out of breath, which is something that people get anxious about. Then maybe you can take the next step and go to the gym. But we're going to kind of touch upon this in a couple, so I won't say too much more and we'll come back to it then. But these are all fine things to do. You don't have to go from zero to 100. It's okay to go zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30 and build up to the to the big one zero zero. So just kind of be honest with yourself, understand what you are capable of and what you're not capable of and also what you want to do. Because as soon as you put yourself in a position where you don't want to do something, ultimately your brain will talk you out of it. So do things that you can do and where you can see a nice end point, again, 10 minutes, then you can start doing it. Before long, you will be a gym guy. Number six, don't do cardio and weights at the same time. It's just a little trick. I mean, if, if you really have to do cardio and weights at the same time, I would say do cardio after your weights because, you know, weightlifting is just more of a exertive activity than it is doing a treadmill or a cross trainer or a row or whatever you're going to do. But if you can, I'm talking about gym hacks here, right? So you want to get the most out of your fitness experience. If you can, divide them up. Now, it is hard because we only have a set amount of time in the day, but that is the ideal way to do it. It's, it, it really, really is true. And there's scientific stuff you can go out there and read. If you can have a dedicated time for your cardio and a different dedicated time for your weights, that's really where you're going to be at your optimum. That's where you're going to be at your premium. And just throwing it out there, there's not really much else to say, but a fact is a fact. Number five, drink a ton of water. Now, this is the easiest one in the world because my tap is there. You know what I mean? It takes me 32 seconds to go and get a drink of water. But much like everything else we said, it just double the amount you're drinking, then triple it, then quadruple it. Don't go too crazy because obviously you can drink too much water. But most people walk around dehydrated without even realizing it. And if you do up your intake of water, I mean, so many things, you're going to feel better, you're going to feel less tired, your skin's going to be better, hair will be better. You know, if you've got spots, they may help th those clear things up. You just feel good. You just feel good by drinking more water. And it's so simple. I know there are some people out there, and look, I love all of you, but I think you're crazy. They go, I don't like water. You are water. A human being is basically just water. We're just flopping around like jellyfish. Some people say, I can only drink juice. It's not true. Your body can absolutely drink water. And if you want to drink juice, fine. But just accept it's got a load of calories and carbohydrates in it. And you're going to have to deal with that. Or sugars, I should say. But just have an extra glass of water today. And again, then tomorrow I have two extra glasses of water. And I don't, don't, you may already be drinking enough. I'm talking to the people that aren't, of course. But those little small things can make all the difference. And again, it's like the clothes stuff. If drinking more water is going to make you feel better, you're just going to be more productive and you're going to be more willing to go and try new things because you feel good inside yourself. So just go and drink like a damn fish. Number four, progressive freaking overload. This ties into what I said we were going to come back to. If you are really struggling right now, to come up with a new plan in the gym 
Just do this. Today is Monday. Let's say you're going to do chest and tries because you're a gym bro and we all train chest on Mondays. Let's say last week you bench press 80 kilograms and you did eight reps. Awesome. Today, you're going to bench 82.5. You're going to utilize those 1.25 kilogram plates that nobody uses and people laugh at. You're going to put them on. Then the following Monday, a week today, you're going to put the 2.5s on. And look at that. Within two weeks, all of a sudden, you've increased your bench press by five kilograms. If you keep doing that every single week or every you know couple of weeks, by the end of the year, who knows where you will be? And hey, maybe you get to the point where you can't lift anymore. You're like, oh, my strength, my strength, but I can still do eight reps at 100. Next week, do nine reps at 100. You did one more rep. Therefore, you have progressed from where you are before. It's the easiest way when you're really, really struggling and you don't know what to do and maybe you've stopped writing stuff down. That's all you got to do. Last week, 100 kilograms. This week, 102.5. Those little weights are gold because it all counts as extra. And yet I see people throwing them into the corner of the gym and you don't clean up after yourself. You know who you are. Number three, use the mirrors. Be a narcissist. There are mirrors in the gym for two reasons. One, the real reason to actually help you with your form. So if you're doing bicep curls or whatever, you can watch it and make sure that you see that muscle contracting and all of that. And two, yes, because we all like to look at ourselves because deep down we are, well, we have no self-worth and we think if we look good for an hour or so, that will make ourselves feel better. And it does work. But yeah, utilize them for either reason. One, again, if it's going to help you with your form, form is more important than anything, more important than strength, more important than getting up every day. Not true. If you don't get up, you can't go to the gym. But number two, it's like the whole clothes thing. If you are looking in the mirror... I mean, it works both ways. Yes, maybe you'll look in the mirror and you'll see something that you don't like. Again, we all struggle with confidence stuff. Of course we do. But then again, there's kind of a positive way to spin that because if you keep going to the gym and you keep it up and say in January, you don't like the way you look and by April, you think, oh, I actually improved. Well, that's, you know, that's a nice little treat for you and you've achieved it and you deserve all the rewards. Some people take it too far. I know some people won't even be lifting weights and they'll be going, but again, screw that guy. That's the guy. Let him have his. He's happy, right? He's happy in his own nuts world. I was in the gym the other day, and somebody was doing shoulder presses with twenties, and he was screaming like he was deadlifted in in a, in a power building competition. Power building is not a thing, and it drove me insane. But I was also like, you know what? Just you do you. I don't care. I can put my headphones in. That's another one. Music. Music is an incredible thing. Music's basically like. Uh, the sound version of performance enhancing drugs. It just it just turns you into a crazy person. You can get fuel from that. But don't be ashamed of using the mirrors because look, everybody else is doing it anyway. Number two, you don't want to waste too much energy in the gym if you are doing big strength exercises. So if you're deadlifting, don't waste all your time taking those weights off the bar. The bar will always roll. No matter how much weight you got, the bar will always roll. Take those magical 2.5s or the five kilograms, whatever, put them down, roll the bar onto those little weights and then you can take the plates off. You can de-rack without having to do that horrible thing when you try and, you know, you try and pick up the bar. You're like, oh God, ah. <laughs> you're shaking. And then by the time you've done that, like I'm exhausted, I can't do another set. Back in the day, at gyms actually used to have that little, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's like a handle that you locked under the bar and you could actually pivot it up in the air. But they seem to have died out. But yeah, just put two little plates under the bar. You can roll on, roll off. And then you're more likely to do heavier deadlifts. We've all done it. You know you could lift more, but the thought of having to try and put more weight on that thing, it's not worth it, so you don't. Use those little plates. Number one is the easiest one in the world. We've said it before. We'll say it again. Go with a friend. Go with a buddy. If you turn it into a social thing, you're more likely to go. It's the same with anything. Cooperative enjoyment is more fun. Same with games. Same with watching TV. Go to the movies. Go to a restaurant. You go with someone else. You go with your friends. You go to talk about. It. Don't you know, over talk and hog machines and things like that. You already know that. You don't need me to tell you. But yes, if you go with a gym buddy, if you go with a friend, if you go with your brother, your sister, your dad, your mum, your auntie, your uncle, your granddad, your grandma, it's just, you're going to be more likely to go. Because also, you know, you're accountable to them. If they're waiting at the gym and you don't turn up, you've also screwed them over. And also, if you look forward to seeing them, but you're not looking forward to the gym, at least you're looking forward to them. So there's your positive. It's the easiest gym hack in the world. And that is that. That is all my gym hacks for you. I'll have more fitness videos this week. But again, if there's anything you want me to talk about specifically, drop it in the comments below. I only have so many ideas and it's good to crowdsource these things. Otherwise, I will lose my mind. Again, please do subscribe, like the video, share the video. I have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. And I use that money to free up my time because I'm a freelancer by trade to make crazy videos like this. Either way, thanks for watching. See you soon.